keep going now. And the next up, we have uh, Jesse. Uh, Jesse will be presenting on circadian preference, sleep inertia, and running performance, a retrospective investigation of runner performance from the 2016 London Marathon. Jesse, I think I needed you about 10 years ago when I was training for a marathon. But um, other than that, we'll uh, see if I can uh, get some PBs now today. So off with you, Jesse. It's all yours. Well, it's never too late, Ian. So maybe you can incorporate some of these findings into your regime now for future okay. uh, see ya. marathon efforts. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, true pleasure to be here. Pleasure to see Shane again. Honestly, I think the uh, MD that he was referencing that was phobic to the gut microbiome, I am still interacting with and still trying to uh, get that on place. So as uh, Ian astutely uh, pointed out, my title today is uh, the Circadian Preference, Sleep Inertia and Running Performance. A retrospective investigation of the 2016 London Marathon runner performance. And uh, yes, my name is Jesse Cook, and I'm a graduate student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in the United States. And here are some of my colleagues, and one you'll hear from shortly, uh, Amy Bender. I just want to draw some specific attention to for her efforts in collecting these data. So thank you, Amy. Really appreciate it. Um, so I imagine that most, if not all of the audience is familiar with the circadian rhythm. So I'm gonna keep this orientation very surface level. Um, more or less, there is an endogenous biological rhythm that regulates essential physiological functions and processes. This rhythm is referred to as the circadian rhythm since it generally is about 24 hours in duration. Over the recent decade, there has been a notable increase in attention to the circadian rhythm and its role in sleep health, as well as athletic performance. And as can be seen by this picture, kind of in the upper right, maybe two or 3 p.m. or two or three o'clock sphere, um, the, uh, our abilities vary across the day. And for example, our peak biological athletic performance is generally thought to occur around the four to 5 p.m. for traditional rhythms. Research has consistently shown that disruption of the circadian rhythm, though uh, through things such as travel across time zones, can have a significant impact on performance abilities. The gold standard to measure one's circadian rhythm it, or chronotype is the measurement of melatonin regulation in dim light conditions. However, one's chronotype is not often readily available, and circadian preference is often leveraged as a proxy into one's chronotype. Circadian preference can be conceived as one's subjective circadian rhythm uh, with significant variation inter-individually. Circadian preference exists on a spectrum from extreme morningness to extreme eveningness with most of us humans falling somewhere in the middle. Uh, there is a wealth of existing literature out there that highlights how one's circadian preference can have an impact on athletic performance and competitive equity. Moving beyond circadian rhythms and circadian preference, uh, sleep inertia is a universal experience that can be thought of as grogginess felt upon awakening. Although a universal experience, the degree of cognitive and physical impairment associated with sleep inertia, as well as the duration of time until sleep inertia subsides, varies markedly among humans. Additionally, prolonged sleep inertia may suggest the presence of an underlying sleep disorder, such as idiopathic hypersomnia. Uh, but generally speaking, sleep inertia lasts for about 15 to 60 minutes for most humans, uh, yet it may persist for hours in some other humans. A general rule of thumb is that sleep inertia lasting longer than 30 minutes is clinically significant. Recently, there has been consideration of sleep inertia as a third process of sleep-wake regulation. However, it's unclear whether this is a distinct, distinct process or rather a residual effect of the transition between sleep biology and wake biology. Despite the potential to influence athletic performance, there is a paucity of research exploring the relationship between sleep inertia and athletic performance. For this investigation, we chose to examine how circadian preference and sleep inertia may influence marathon runner performance. Since marathons typically begin early in the morning, it seems plausible that there is competitive disadvantage for those with greater eveningness preference. Similarly, those with greater sleep inertia may experience difficulties uh, performing optimally soon after awakening. Yet the relationships between circadian preference, sleep inertia, and marathon runner performance have been largely unexplored. To the best of our knowledge, only one investigation exists assessing how circadian preference influence marathon outcomes, with the results suggesting better performance on those among those who have a morningness preference. And we approach this investigation with the following three hypotheses. Uh, so we believe that circadian evening or greater evening as preference would associate with worse marathon runner performance as evidenced by longer completion times. 
Uh, we also hypothesized that greater sleep inertia severity would associate with worse marathon runner performance and that there would be a significant interaction between circadian preference and sleep inertia, whereby persons with greater eveningness preference and more severe sleep inertia would have the worst running performance. So this investigation leveraged data from uh, collected from the 2016 Virgin Money London Marathon participants. Each participant completed the athlete sleep screening questionnaire, the ASSQ, which is a validated measure for assessing sleep and circadian health in athletes. This questionnaire requires athletes to retrospectively describe their sleep and circadian habits. For this investigation, we utilize single item questions to characterize our focal predictors of circadian preference and sleep inertia. And these are the questions from the ASSQ that were utilized to capture circadian preference and sleep inertia specifically. Marathon completion time served as the outcome variable while runner gender, age range, and a composite sleep difficulty score derived from the relevant ASQ items were available for covariates across adjusted statistical analyses. And in terms of statistical analyses, analysis of variance was utilized to assess for significant variance across focal predictor variables while supplemental pairwise comparisons were performed to assess for specific differences within the levels of focal predictor variables. And lastly, linear regression was employed to estimate the magnitude of difference between levels of focal predictor variables with adjusted models, including all available, available covariates. All right, so now time for the fun stuff. Uh, let's dive into the actual results. So here is the sample characteristics. And the analytic sample included 945 of the 951 race participa participants as six were removed due to missing data. The sample was predominantly male and young to middle-aged adults. And few participants characterized themselves as definitely evening types, while most participants had morningness tendencies, 61% uh, in total. Most participants reported minimal to no sleep inertia problems as evidenced by 63.7% of the sample responding with either fairly alert or very alert. Here I present the mean marathon completion time across the various levels of circadian preference, along with the results from the statistical analyses examining the relationship between circadian preference and marathon, marathon completion time. As is evident, identifying is definitely a morning type associated with the lowest marathon completion time. Additionally, there was statistically significant variance in completion time across the levels of circadian preference as evidenced by the global ANOVA. Pairwise comparisons highlighted the significant differences between those identifying as definitely a morning type and those with evening, evening as preference. Lastly, regression results suggested that each degree of change to eveningness and circadian preference associated with about a five minute increase in marathon completion time with statistical significance maintaining in the adjusted model. And on this slide here, I visually present the relationship between circadian preference and marathon completion time uh, and as mentioned on the previous slide, shifting towards eveningness associated with significantly worse marathon completion time. And kind of remarkably, it seemingly appears as a bit of a step progression between these levels of circadian preference. Here I present the mean marathon completion time across the various levels of sleep inertia, along with the results from the statistical analyses examining the relationship between sleep inertia and marathon completion time. As is evidence, identifying as very alert, associated with the lowest marathon completion time. Somewhat surprisingly, there was not statistically significant variance in completion time across the levels of sleep inertia as evidenced by a non-significant global ANOVA, yet pairwise comparisons were still performed and they highlighted significant differences between those identifying as very alert and those reporting being fairly alert and slightly alert. Lastly, regression results suggested that each degree of increase in sleep inertia severity associated with about a four minute increase in marathon completion time with this relationship falling slightly outside of statistical significance in the adjusted model. And similar to the last relationship, I visually present the relationship here between sleep inertia and marathon completion time. Um, and as mentioned on the previous slide, greater degrees of sleep inertia severity associated with significantly worse marathon completion time. But unlike circadian preference and marathon completion time, the relationship does not appear to be as much of a step progression Rather, there seems to be something unique among runners responding with very alert that is beneficial to marathon outcomes. And this graph visually presents the interactive relationship between circadian preference and sleep inertia on marathon completion time, which proved to be statistically significant. Morningness runners are presented in the bars on the left, the two on the left there, while eveningness runners are presented in the bars on the right there. Orange bars represent those with low to no sleep inertia severity, while the gray bars represent those with greater sleep inertia severity. 
And aligning with the a priori hypotheses, the presence of sleep inertia associated with worse running performance in the morning use group. Yet this relationship did not translate to the evening use group. In fact, the opposite was observed, whereby those with sleep inertia, without sleep inertia problems displayed worse marathon performance. So ultimately, this one's a bit of a head scratcher to interpret that, but that is science sometimes. And to summarize, the results from this investigation suggest that greater evenness preference and greater sleep inertia severity associated with worse marathon running performance. Uh, additionally, the results indicate that sleep inertia can have a moderating influence on the relationship between circadian preference and marathon running performance, yet the dy dynamics between these interacting factors need to be further clarified with improved methodology. Uh, lastly, these results highlight the potential utility for advancing circadian tendencies of runners through circadian-based strategies and lifestyle adjustments, as well as employing interventions to attenuate sleep inertia severity in order to reduce competitive disadvantage associated with these characteristics. Being science, there are limitations. Uh, first, we relied upon a singular item and time point to characterize both circadian preference and sleep inertia. And also the question included the ASSQ may not fully represent sleep inertia. Um, traditionally, you know, we may utilize uh, a question that asks how long it takes you for, to dissipate from sleep inertia rather than how alert you are within the first 30 minutes of post-awakening. We relied upon subjective retrospective reporting rather than objective measurement tools when uh, and so future research should lever those when possible. And we had no information on their sleep or travel directly preceding the competition, which likely uh, impacted the results. And we had scarcity of demographic data to look at these at a more granular level. So I thank you all very much for your time and your patience. And yes, we have reached the finish line.